a clergy whose job is to be doing the preaching, to be doing the work of the ministry, that is an error that has slowed down God's work. The clergy constitute just 2% of the body of Christ. The so-called lay people constitute 98%. Imagine 98% of members of the, of the body of Christ sitting down, warming those chairs and not doing ministry. No wonder the work of God has been slowed down. No wonder these false religions are taking over so many places because people empowered by the Holy Spirit have been taught that they do not have a ministry. That what they have is just to come to church and be encouraged. Come to church and feel high. No, every believer is a priest. And every priest has a ministry. And that ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. Do you need a title for that? You already have a title. And the title you have is that you are a saint, you are a priest unto God. And every priest has a ministry of reconciliation. Do you need special ordination for that? Jesus said, I've ordained you that you may go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So here are the three things that we need to consider. Number one, is that every believer is a priest and every priest has a ministry it's the ministry of reconciliation we are to reconcile men back to god we are to broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world everywhere the marketplace the schools your offices everywhere we are to broadcast the glorious works of God, the wonderful acts of God. Let sinners out there know that the enmity between God and, 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 and them has been taken care of by the cross of Jesus. I know there are some scriptures you read in the Old Testament that we still refer to today that we need to interpret with some caution. God is angry with the wicked. How many times? Every day. Every day, he's angry with the wicked. That's in the Old Testament. But that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus came. When he hung on that cross, the ministry of reconciliation was taking place. That sinners out there, you do not have to remain enemies of God. God wants you to become his friends. God wants you to become his own. And that's why he poured his wrath on Jesus so that sinners can be reconciled back to him. How many of you here have been reconciled with God? There is no more enmity between you and God. When God looks at you, he looks at someone he cherishes. How many of you? Let me see your hands up. How many of you, you know that God loves you so much, loves you um, as much as he loves Jesus? Why? You've been reconciled back to him. That same reconciliation is to be extended through you to others out there. No, the job is not completed until you become the reason why somebody gets reconciled back to God. God is no more angry with the sinner every day. No. He has poured that wrath on Jesus. Now he's calling all. Come, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. The reason why the physician is here is because somebody is sick. Is the sick that needs a physician. It's those that are sinners out there that need a savior. And God saved you so that you can become an instrument of salvation to somebody else. Is that your job? Yes, it's your job. Is that your ministry? Yes, it's your What is ministry? Ministry simply means work. It means service. It means a job to be done. And everyone who has been reconciled back to God through Jesus has a responsibility. And that responsibility is to realize there are still people still out there that are in darkness, still in bondage, still under the whiplash of the enemy. There is no way they can come to Jesus until it becomes God's voice that will let them know, broadcast abroad, that sinners can be saved. No matter how terrible they've lived their lives in the past, there is still room in the heart of God for one more person. And since until we do that, we'll be falling short of our ministry. I want you to think about it again. 98% of the 
of members of the body of Christ who believe they have nothing to do for the kingdom except to come and encourage the pastor. Now, if 98% of your body stops walking, that's a dead person. Men full of life, full of power, anointed by the Holy Ghost, but not extending that ministry to others out there that need to be saved. So every believer is a priest and every priest has a ministry and that ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. Now we all know of the ascension gifts in the body of Christ. Those leadership gifts. Not everybody is called into that. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the fivefold ministry. Not everybody is called into that. But the reason why God has called people into the fivefold offices is to equip the body of Christ to put tools in your hand so that you will do the work of the ministry. So if I'm succeeding as a pastor, it is to put tools in your hand so that you do this work of the ministry. The work of Jesus. The work of reconciling sinners back to God. The work of ensuring that souls are saved. Every priest has a ministry. And it's the ministry of reconciliation. Please wave your hand and say, Jesus, I thank you. Are you happy you have a ministry? In the body of Christ, there are no vestigial organs. Is that big English? In the body of Christ, there are no what? Vestigial organs. In your body, there are vestigial organs. What are vestigial organs? There are organs in your body that up till today, scientists do not know what the use is. If you check the vertebra of a human being, at the tip of the vertebra column, there's one small bone there called the coccyx. How many of you did biology? At the tip, you see one tiny bone. It's called what? The coccyx. Now, doctors do not know the use of that bone. Scientists do not know the use of that bone. So they tell us that as a result of evolution, because you came out of a monkey, that that little piece there is, the, is a vestigial organ. In other words, the remnant of, of the tail of the donkey in the donkey, did I say donkey, sorry? In the monkey, that tail is useful as, as it jumps from tree to tree, from branch to branch. It helps it to stabilize. But in the human being, that tiny thing, nobody knows the use. The appendix, for instance, they can remove your appendix. You're not going to feel anything. So those are vestigial organs. However, in the body of Christ, anybody who is a member has a role to play has a function. Hear me well. In God's team, there are no people on reserve. No spectators. Sure, if you don't do your part, somebody, God can get raise somebody to, 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 to take over and, and carry out that rule. But every member of the body is functional. Every member of the body is meant to be in active service. Every member of the body of Christ has a role to play, has a function to perform. And one function all of us are meant to play is to carry out the ministry of reconciliation. Let the sinners know the arms of God Almighty are wide open. They can come just as they are because the wrath of God has been poured on Jesus so that people can become friends of God. And I pray nothing will silence your voice. Amen. Nothing will muffle your voice. Amen. You are going to declare it on house tops. Let them know that salvation is still available. And it's available to anyone who would come. Oh, what a precious and priceless ministry. So that's the first point I want to stress. We are here called out of darkness into his marvelous light so that we can broadcast his glorious wonders. How many broadcasters do we have here? 
I hope your station is working. Your station is working. Let them hear loud and clear. Jesus says. Oh. Let them know you are not ashamed of this gospel. That's what has brought you to where you are. The limelight of God's glorious liberty. Why should you be ashamed? If for instance during this, uh, this, this, this pandemic of COVID. You found the cure. The cure for COVID-19. That one tree in your house. Once people take the leaves they will be healed. Because your family has caught COVID. You gave them the, the, the leaves. They, 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 you boiled it. They drank it and they got healed. How many of you will keep that news to yourself? No. You let others know. That this thing killing others. Does not have to kill them. There is a cure. There is a cure. By the grace of God, there is a cure for sin. The cross has answered every sin problem that man has. What God now wants is for them to come to him just as, as they are. Reconcilement back to God. Have I told you the story before about this mysterious well that, that swallowed you know, about 20 people. All of them just got trapped there. None of them could come out. Then somebody came along and saw he was hearing cries of agony when and bought a rope, a thick rope, and then lowered it and pulled out one of those people trapped and told the man, now that I have pulled you out, use the same rope to help somebody else. And the man got excited. He was happy at his deliverance and left the rope, left the other people trapped in the well and came to church to testify. What would you call him? No, that man was given the ministry of reconciliation, of saving others who have been trapped just as he was trapped. No, it would be most unfair for that man to forget the other people there and go giving testimonies of his freedom. You were saved so that through you somebody can find Jesus. That's the ministry of reconciliation. Every priest has that ministry. Number two. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. That's as a priest, that's something you've got to do. Because God will never be able to use you beyond your level of yieldedness, of dedication, and of consecration. So you offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice. That's in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Where henceforth all you desire in life is that God's will be done, that Jesus be glorified, where you say it and mean it. Not my will, O oh God but your will be done. Not my way, but your way. Not my plans, but your plan. You say it a minute. As somebody yielded to God, somebody consecrated to him, somebody who is living a life of surrender where there is nothing in life that matters to you as much as bringing pleasure to God Almighty. If you get to that point, brothers and sisters, your life will be a living testimony on this earth. But all I desire, all I aim for, all I pursue is that Jesus be glorified. I don't own anything. He owns everything. I am just a steward of the gifts of God, of the grace of God. Nobody here owns it, not even your life. You don't own anything. Everything we have, we have as stewards, as managers. As stewards because there is someone who owns those things. And the day will come, all of us will give an account of our stewardship. The life you are living is his own. Your position in life is grace from him. Anything you have right now, you have them to manage, not just to own. And that's why you want to go through life with your eyes set on the judgment seat of Christ. This is not to frighten anybody, but all of us are going to stand before that judgment seat. We'll be there. I will be there. You will be there. 
Now I'm glad I'll be there because it's a day of reward where our labors that have not been in vain will be rewarded by the master. So we look forward to us that day. That all the sacrifices you've made, all the labor you've expended to extend God's kingdom. No, God keeps his records very neat. So we go through life with our eyes set on eternity. Setting our affection on things above. Not on these mundane things that will soon fade away. What will it profit a man against the whole world at the expense of his soul? What will it profit you if you get the accolade of men, the applause of men, at the expense of carrying out the ministry of reconciliation? What will that profit you on the long run? Brothers and sisters, I've said it many times, wise people don't just prepare for tomorrow. They prepare for eternity. Because there are people that for them tomorrow may never come. Some of the brethren that have passed on, I'm sure some of them were planning for the next 20 years. So for some, tomorrow may never come. But for every one of you, eternity will come. And so wise people prepare for eternity. Therefore, brothers and sisters, what you do now is to yield yourself as a living sacrifice in the hands of God. Lord, use me to accomplish your will. But everything I desire in life is to bring pleasure to God. That's the second thing that you've got to do. Consecrate yourself. Consecrate means you offer yourself to God as a living sacrifice. I want to remind you, if God is not enough for us, nothing else will be enough for us. Please touch your neighbor. Say, God is enough. enough. Touch your neighbor. Say, God is enough enough. for me. Because if God is not enough for you, nothing else will be enough for you. If God doesn't satisfy you, nothing else will satisfy you in life. Can I say to you, if God does not satisfy you, what he gives to you will not satisfy you. There is no way God will make a world where people will live their lives as if they don't need him. Forever you would ever be in need of God. That's why he called you to seek first his kingdom. Seek his face. Seek his righteousness. Then all other things will be added to you. But first and foremost, I am here to do the will of God. Jesus said, lift up your eyes. Look at the fields. It's white already for harvest. That should be a burden on our hearts as God's people. It's saddening when you hear statistics that in a whole year, 95% of Christians did not win a soul. Some of you are shaking your heads. Ask yourself, how many souls have you won this year? When you are setting your goals for the year, how many of you set soul winning goals? But at least once a week, years back when I was much younger, on Sundays I will not taste food until I witness to somebody. I remember those years on the campus, I will ride my bicycle and be going around until I preach to somebody, I will not eat that Sunday. You say, man of God, is that not legalism? Now these are the kind of disciplines that separate those who are instruments of honor in the hands of God and those who are just simply spectators. Discipline. But I will not go to that Facebook until I give a call to somebody to encourage the person in the Lord. And when you make such decisions, the separation between you and those who are just matching time becomes very obvious with time. Since This is the hour. This is the season. Lift up your eyes. The harvest is white. The neighbors are there. Your classmates are there. Your family members are there. Waiting for you to share with them this glorious experience which you have had. That Jesus saves. Jesus delivers. And that men can become friends of God Almighty. Lift up your hands. Say, God, you are my friend. Are you excited about that?